sanity is back. <laughs> One of the things that uh, that I like about Christians is that they know how to put it together when it needs to be put together. We are Christians. We bend when we need to bend. We stiff when we need to be stiff. We're Christians. I laugh a lot because I found out that Christians have no reason to be unhappy. And so I say, Parker, why are you frowning? Why aren't you smiling? Well, I say, I don't smile a lot. It's just me. I don't smile a lot. I smile now. And I'm happy now. I'm happy to be in the presence of Christians 
that also smiles and also happy. So I just want to say as we get started this morning, if you are one who have erred from the truth and you need prayer, you want prayer, if you are stand, we'll pray for you. If you're one that has burdens, and we all have burdens that we deal with day after day at work, at home, or relatives, or whatever, we all have these things going on. We'll pray for you. Just stand. Would you pray with me, please? Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning realizing that our whole life must be in the palm of your hand if we are to be successful. We think of you day and night. We think of the love, the mercy, the passion that you have shown toward us and the grace. And we ask you day after day, time after time, to forgive us for all the errors that we have committed. Lift us up so that we may let the others see you, the Holy Spirit operating in us. We need you this way. We ask you, Heavenly Father, to go with us the rest of the day. Give us the wisdom, the strength, and the understanding to apply what you want us to apply so that everything we do will be right in your sight. These things we ask in your son's name. Amen. No tears in heaven. No tears in heaven, no sorrows given, all will be glory in the land. There'll be no sadness, all will be gladness, for when we shall join that happy band, I'm singing, no tears in heaven, fair. No tears, no tears up there. Sorrow and pain will all have flown. Oh, I'm singing, no tears to never fail. No tears, no tears up there. No tears and heaven will be known. Oh, glory is waiting, waiting on yonder. Who and we shall spend our days? days. There with our Savior will be forever. When no more sorrow can is made, hey, I'm singing no tears in heaven there. No tears, no tears up there. Sorrow. And pain will all have flown. I'm singing, no tears in heaven fair. No tears, no tears up there. No tears in heaven will be known. Some morning yonder, who will cease to ponder? Oh, think. This life has brought to few All will be clearer Say what's be dearer And never will all be made new We'll sing it No tears in heaven fair No tears, no tears up there Sorrow and pain will all have flown. Oh, I'm singing, no tears in heaven fair. No tears, no tears up there. No tears in heaven will be known. Oh, good morning, good morning. All right, how's everybody doing this morning? God is good. All the time. All right, so we're going to have our announcements. All right. If this is your first time visiting with our congregation, welcome. Okay, we would love to meet you and we would like for you to stand if you can.
can. It's not our intention. Okay. It's not our intention to embarrass you. You know, we're not stalking you or nothing. Not trying to stalk you. you know, we just want to be able to better greet you at the close of our service. We do have, we're going to have something in store for you. So if you can, please stand if you're around. No? Okay, that's all right. If you're shy, it's okay. All right, please, please continue uh, to pray for uh, Sister Camp and the family due to the recent passing of, of her mother. Okay, uh, it was a beautiful service, beautiful. It was very beautiful, and uh, so we just encourage, try to encourage her. Let's encourage her and Amen. be with her in her time of grieving. Okay, always in process. Amen. Amen. Please welcome our new brother in Christ, Eric Wallace, right? And you just uh, got to welcome him. Anytime somebody come into faith, it's, it's awesome. Amen. It's awesome and exciting. So let's welcome him to the brother. To welcome him to the, to the faith. Thank you. Okay, a very special thanks to, to Brother Riley and Gail and Sister Duke. Okay, for the DCC, for the BBS that we had last week. It was awesome. <laughs> Volunteers, parents, and children that attend our BBS this week. Thank you for the dedication to sharing God's word with the family and the community. Please encourage next time. Encourage as many as you can. It was awesome. I mean, that, that was really awesome, I'm telling you. Calling all singers, calling all singers, please join us as we begin our praise and worship rehearsal on July 9th, which is today, today. Immediately following morning worship. Okay, we're gonna get together. If you wanna sing, if you feel like you think you can do it, come on together. And we're going to encourage one another and hopefully encourage the community and everybody around us. Okay, rehearsals will continue uh, the second and the fourth Sunday of each month. For all questions, please see Brother uh, Gill, uh, Nate Adams, and Brother David, Ray Davis. Okay, the Understanding of Your Grief workshop will take place every Wednesday evening from July 12th to August 30th from 6 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. Okay, uh, one thing to keep in mind, all right, for those who will be attending the sessions, you must be in attendance for the first two sessions. I repeat, for those who are going to be attending the sessions, the grief sessions, you must be in attendance for the first two sessions. There will be no new participants accepted after the second session. If you have any, if you have not submitted uh, the names, please do so today, okay? Right. If you would, uh, uh, if you have any any questions on that, please contact Sister Joyce uh, Robinson. Okay. Uh, there will be a youth parent meeting next Sunday. There will be a youth parent meeting next Sunday. We got a lot of events coming up. We're trying to encourage everybody. We're getting started. The pandemic is over with. Amen. At least a little bit. You know. Trying to get everybody encouraged to get this thing going. So we're going to have the youth parent meeting next uh, Sunday immediately following our morning worship in Fellowship Hall. Uh, our, um, our parents are encouraged, all parents are encouraged to attend. For all questions, please see the, all of the uh, youth um, leaders, leadership, okay? Ladies, there will be a brief meeting next Sunday. There will be a brief meeting next Sunday immediately following our morning worship as we make plans for our Ladies' Day luncheon. For all questions, please see uh, Sister Davis and Sister Houston, okay? All are encouraged to attend the next DCC and the Rollercade on Monday the, seven, the 17th. All are encouraged to attend the next DCC and the Rollercade at the Rollercade on Monday, July 17th at 6.30 p.m. Once again, we try and encourage everybody. Let's get together, encourage one another, okay? All right, the cost for the skates is $10 per person, and there will be no charge for non-skaters. For all questions, please see the D.C. Youth, um, youth leaders. All right, sisters, get ready. All the sisters, time to get ready for the D.C.C. style. Sisters, tailoring your lifestyle expressions on July 22nd, 2000, July 22nd and 11.30, um, excuse me, 11 a.m. July 22nd at 11 a.m. Join our sisters for a great time of fun and fellowship. For all questions, please see Sister Lofton and Sister Houston. The 
DCC security team. The DCC security team will host an active shooter training class during the month of August. Okay, they're going to host an active shooter training class during the month of August. The date and time will be determined for all questions. Please see Brother Maurice Hill and Ricardo Barnett. All right, now we're going into the National Church News, National Church of Christ News. It's going on the Brotherhood. The North, uh, the, what, the P.D. Oker, forgive me on that. Peora, yeah, North Peora Church of Christ in Oklahoma will be having their homecoming celebration weekend on August 4th through the 6th. Homecoming celebration, that's always awesome. Uh, Sister Davis, Sean Watkins, and Sister Houston will speak at their, at the women's conference. Okay, there will also be several preachers and gospel and um, and gospel concerts. Okay, if you would like to attend, please call Sister Sparks, Sister Corella Sparks. Please get in touch with her. Okay, the Laurel Street Church of Christ will host the San Antonio uh, Churches. Yeah, will host the San Antonio Churches of Christ Men's Retreat at the South uh, Party Island in October of this year. Okay, so they're going to be hosting a churches uh, a men's retreat at South Party Island in October of this year. All brothers are encouraged to attend. All right? The National Lectureship, the National, excuse me, National Lectureship of the Churches of Christ will take place on in March of 2024, March of next year in Montgomery, Alabama. Okay? Please make plans to attend that. Please make plans to attend that. All right? The 37th Annual Church of Christ Ladies Lectureship Retreat. The 37th Annual Church of Christ Ladies Lectureship Retreat will take place March 28th through the 31st of next year. Okay, there will be a brief meeting July 2nd, which I guess would already happen, after the morning worship, and a sign-in sheet is located before you. For all questions, please see Sister Sparks. So see Sister Sparks about that you want to attend. Okay, please join our weekly Bible classes. Okay, all are encouraged to attend. All youth adults, excuse me, all young adults are encouraged to attend our weekly Bible class every Sunday at 5 p.m. So they have a 5 p.m. class for the youth for the young adults. For all questions, please see Elder Riley. All members are encouraged to attend our midweek Bible classes every Tuesday at 6.30 p.m. Our midweek Bible classes every Tuesday at 6.30 p.m. Our brothers meet via blue jeans. Okay, our sisters meet via Zoom. And we all have our Wednesday morning uh, Bible class at, our, at the church building at 10.30. Okay, also please join our women's viral, uh, vir excuse me, virtual call every Thursday at 6.30 p.m. And our congregational prayer call those of you who don't remember, it's now been changed to Wednesday at 7 p.m. via Blue Jeans. Okay? Uh, that'll be it for announcements. Let's prepare our minds for worship. Time to praise God. Amen. Good morning. How's everybody doing this morning? We ready to worship God? Let, let's together stand, if you don't mind. Let's together stand. Oh, Lord, singing, oh, Lord, oh, Lord, you restored me. Let's sing, say, oh, Lord, singing, oh, Lord, come on, oh, Lord, you restored me. You know that I'm not worthy. No, I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy. You restored me. You say that I'm not worthy. Oh, I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy. You restored me. And I never would have made it. No, I never would have made it. And never you restored me. And I 
never would have made it. No, I never would have made it. Never. You restore me. You know that I'm not worthy. No, I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy. You restore me. And oh, how I need you. Oh, how I need you. Oh, how I need you. You restore me. Let's say, oh, how I need you. Oh, how I need you. Oh, how I need you. You restore me. Come on and say, Jesus, 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 sweet Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, 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 you restore me. Come on and say, Jesus, Jesus, oh, Jesus, 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 sweet Jesus. You restore me. Come on and say, oh, oh, Lord, oh, oh, Lord, sing, oh, oh, Lord, you restore me. Come on and say, oh, oh, Lord, oh, oh, Lord, oh, Lord. This life is filled with sorrow and troubles here below. We often made to wonder just why it should be so. In every tribulation, this life must bring to view. Oh, Lord, we need a friend like you. Oh, Lord, we need a Savior up on this weary road. We need someone to guide us and to share our will. And we need someone to love us and to tell us what to do. Oh, Lord, we need a friend like you. Oh, Lord, we know you travel the road to Jericho. And help the lonely pilgrim, the Bible. When all our friends forsake us and all the world seems blue. Oh, Lord, we need a friend like you. Oh, Lord, we need a Savior upon this weary road. We need someone to guide and to share our heavy load. Yes, we need someone to love us and to tell us what to do. Oh, Lord, we need a friend like you. And they say that many try will come to vex the soul. That cloud will often gather to dim in every sad condition to lead us safely through. Oh, Lord, we need a friend like you. Oh, Lord, we need a Savior upon this weary road. We need someone to guide us and to share our Oh, we need someone to love us and to tell us what to do. Oh, Lord, we need a friend like, oh, Lord, we need a Savior up on this weary road. We need someone to guide 
Well, we need someone to love us and to tell us what to do. Oh, Lord, we need a friend like you. Good morning, church. Just a little talk with Jesus. I once was lost in sin, but Jesus took me. Oh, and then a little light from heaven filled my, my soul. Oh, my soul, it bathed my heart in. Oh, and wrote my name. Uh, you know that just a little talk with makes me whole oh well now let us have a little talk with and everybody ought to all about our i know that he will hear our faintest and my god he will answer by and now when you feel a little prayer for singing as your heart under heaven is and if you do you'll find a little talk with jesus makes it right oh well sometimes my past seems my lord my array of cheer oh and then a cloud of doubt may hide the light of day and you know the mist of sin may sometimes and hide those starry. You know that just a little talk with Jesus clears the way. And no, oh, well now let us have a little talk with and everybody tell him all about our struggle. He will hear our faintest. And my God, he will answer by him. Oh, now when you feel a little prayer for a singing as your heart under heaven is. And if you do, you'll find a little talk with Jesus makes it. It makes it right. It makes it right. And I know it's all right. Said it's all right. Yes, yeah, all right. You know it's all right, yeah, saying just a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Said it makes it right, and I know it's all right. Oh, it's all right, yeah, it's all right. You know it's all right, yeah, say just a little talk with Jesus makes it right said that I may, I may, now I may have doubts and, oh my Lord, my eyes be filled with, well, but Jesus is a friend who, both day and night, and you know that I go to him and, oh he knows, he he knows my every care, oh yeah, say just a little talk with Jesus makes it, it makes it right, it makes it right, now let us have a little talk with, and everybody ought to tell him all about our, I know that he will hear our faintest cry, and my God, he will answer. By and by, now when you feel a little full yearning as your heart to heaven is, and if you do, you'll find a little talk with Jesus makes it, it makes it right, it makes it right, and I know it's all right. Oh, it's all right, I said it's all right. You know it's all right, yeah, say just a little talk with Jesus makes it right, oh, and I know it's all right, oh, it's all right, say it's all right, 
You know it's all right. Yeah, say just a little talk with Jesus makes it right. I'll be coming out of Acts 19, verses 13 through 16. Then some of the Intenerate Jewish exorcists took it upon themselves to call the name of the Lord Jesus over those who had evil spirits, saying, "We, exor we exorcise you by the by, by the by the Jesus whom Paul preaches." Also, there were seven sons of Sceva, a Jewish chief priest who did so. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are you? Then the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them, overpowered them, and prevailed against them. So they fled out of that house naked and wounded. I just read to you Acts 19, 13 through 16. Bless the readers and doers and hearers of his word. Thank you. Good morning, church. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we are here today to worship you in spirit and truth, hoping that everything said and done will be pleasing in thy sight. Lord, please bless this congregation, bless our leadership, bless our elders, bless our senior saints, and most of all, bless our dear minister. And it be in the mighty name of Jesus Christ that we all say, amen. My God is awesome, he can move mountains and keep me in the valley and hide me from the rain. Oh, my God is awesome, he heals me when I'm broken, the strength where I've been weakened, forever he will reign. Oh, my God is awesome, oh, awesome, oh, awesome. Oh, 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 my God is awesome. And if you believe that he's, you say it and you feel in your heart that he's, oh, I know, I know he's, oh, my God is all the Savior of. The giver of, by his stripes, I'm healed. Oh, my God is all today I am. His grace is why you ought to praise his, his holy name. My God is awesome, and if you believe that he is, you say it and you feel in your heart that he's, oh, I know, I know, yeah, my God is awesome, and if you believe that he is, you say it and you feel in your heart that he's, Oh, I know, I know he's awesome. Oh, because my Lord, he's mighty. Say he's mighty. Oh, he's mighty. Said he's mighty. Yeah, he's awesome. Stand to your feet, please. Oh, awesome. Oh, my God is mighty. Said he's mighty. Oh, he's mighty, said he's mighty, yeah, he's all. Oh, my God is all. 
awesome, and you know, my God, he's holy. Said he's holy. Oh, he's holy. He's holy. Yes, he's Oh, I know my God is awesome, and the Lord, he's my protector, the protector, my protector, protector, yeah, he's all, oh, my God is awesome, oh, now let me hear you say, that's what he is to me. Will say that's what he is to me. That's what he is. Said he's awesome. Oh, awesome. Oh, now let me hear you say that's what he is to me. That's what he is. Saying that's what he is to me. Said he's awesome. Oh, awesome. Oh. My God is all he can move, he can move my and keep me in the valley and hide me from the rain. Oh my God is because he heals me when I'm broken. The strength where I've been weakened, forever he will reign. Oh, my God is awesome. Once again, we are truly thankful to this awesome God that we serve. He's a great God. He blesses us in ways that we cannot even imagine. As a matter of fact, he's blessing you right now. Did he wake you up this morning? Did he send you on your way? Then you need to give him some glory. You need to give him some praise. You need to give him some honor. We continue to pray for Karen and we pray for the family. I want to tell you, Karen, yesterday... That was one of the most inspirational home-going celebrations I've ever been a part of. I mean, your mother had great influence and great impact. I mean, the building was packed from the Ruta to the Tudor. I was in the overflow. And Gary, let me tell you, when you got through eulogizing your mama, it was over. I mean, it was over. I mean, when you said what you said, I mean, she, 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 she long-winded now. I mean, she, she can't never say anything about how long I preach. <laughs> 35, 40 minutes later. But it was, it was beautiful. You did an outstanding job, and I know your mom, she would be proud. And Mimi and Gigi and the family, we just want y'all to know we love you. We love you with the love of the Lord. Your mom, she was just so elegant. Anytime I saw her, last time I saw her was at... Uh, um, a A J what A R two uh, wedding, yeah, and of course uh, now Mrs. Riley, uh, the second uh, I saw her. That's the last time I saw her was at the wedding, and uh, she was just always elegant, always lovely, always kind, always wonderful. And now she's in the land of the ever living, and we're in the land of the ever dying. And so, Lord willing, one day, one day we'll be able to fellowship with her again. Uh, we look like we should have had that funeral here, but that place was so packed. You know, I, I'm sure everybody would have come all the way from Victoria. I mean, the way folks showed up from all over the state and other places just to be here for your mother. Uh, she was an amazing woman. And then also, we just want to uh, highlight, you see the decorations around the building, uh, one of our elder brother Riley and sister Riley and all those who played a part with the, uh, we need to call it VEBS, very exciting Bible school. We had just a wonderful, <laughs> wonderful time. I mean, it was first class 
And we, I mean, it was, you, you missed a treat. And so I just want to commend them for such a wonderful, wonderful job. And I think we as adults enjoyed it as much as the children did. I, I guess the only thing we could do next year, Anthony, you got to incentivize these kids. You, I, I know in New York, we used to give our prizes. And the first prize was the big prize, whoever brought the most visitors, maybe an iPad, maybe a laptop, uh, maybe a phone, whatever it takes. But those kids brought guests every night. I mean, it was first class. I don't know what else you could have done. I mean, the picnic was off the chain. The curriculum was off the chain. The, the teachers were, I mean, we just had a great time, y'all. A great time. And so we just want to commend you. I wish I had the vocabulary to articulate how wonderful it was. And then also, we want you all to prepare your hearts and minds in August, uh, the second week in August. We're going to have a revivalistic Sunday. Got a young brother coming up. I don't know how young Brother Morrison is. I just know he's younger than me. So anybody younger than me, I call him young. He might be 40 plus years old. He might be 50. I don't know. But he's younger than me. But he's an outstanding uh, preacher, Brother Jonathan Morrison. And you will be extremely blessed. We will highlight it more and more. We just hope and pray that you make plans for our evangelistic Sunday. And we will give you more information about that in the near future. All right, let us stand for the reading of the word of God. I want us to back up to verse number 11 of Acts chapter 19. Don't have time to deal with this. This is a, a text that was assigned to me in the national lectureship. We're still in the book of Acts. Acts chapter 19, I want to back up to verse number 11. If you're there, say amen. Amen. And God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul. This is during the miraculous age when God gave limited uh, ability to the apostles and those whom the apostles laid their hands upon. Now, I do want you to know, we don't have apostles today. We have imposters, but we don't have apostles. When the, when the last apostle died, that was it. These folk claiming to speak in tongue. Now nah, they ain't speaking in tongue. They just think they speak it in tongue. All those gifts perish and pass with the apostles. But I don't have time to get into all that. Verse 12, so that from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs or aprons, and the diseases departed from them, and the evil spirits went out of them. Isn't that amazing? I mean, these are handkerchiefs that, that, that just came in contact with the apostles. And, and just for somebody to be touched by them, they were healed instantaneously. I tell these folk to claim they can heal today. Let's go to the cancer ward at the hospital. Let's find somebody that's in the fourth stage and there's nothing they can do for them. You claim you can heal now, if you heal one, I guarantee you, I heal another. I, I mean, if these folk have the gift that the apostles have, why are you putting no theatrics and, and, and trying to uh, fascinate people on television? If you can heal, go to the hospital, heal the sick. And if that work, go down to the morgue and raise the dead. I mean, Eutychus fell off the ledge and died when Paul preached too long, and Paul went down and raised him from the dead. And then the Bible says in verse 13 of the text, then certain of the vagabond Jews, exorcists, took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits, the name of the Lord Jesus, saying, we adjure you. By Jesus, whom Paul preaches. Verse 14. And there were seven, seven sons of one Siva, a Jew, and chief of the priests, which did so. And the evil spirit answered and said, watch this, even the demons know who we are. Jesus, I know. And Paul I know, but who are ye? And the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them, 
and overcame them and prevailed against them so that they fled out of the house naked and wounded. You may be seated in the presence of our God. This is Paul on his third missionary journey there in the area of Ephesus. And then Paul even went to a university that called uh, Tyrannus, Tyrannus University. Paul was at the college campus preaching, which gives us a proof text for us going to college campuses and reaching out to young people. And Paul was there for nearly four years. One could argue that the seven churches of Asia were established there during the ministry of Paul. One could conjecture that the seven churches of Asia came out of the missionary journeys of the Apostle Paul. I want to speak as a spiritual guy with this thought in our minds. Does the devil know who you are? Does the devil know who you are? It was while Paul performed miracles and preached the gospel that he was being observed by onlookers who did not understand the word of God. They did not understand the will of God and they did not understand the way of God. And brothers and sisters, I need to tell you that my, my spirit is troubled this morning because as I look around the brotherhood, the brotherhood has become fractured. We've got false doctrine all over the place. And I'm reminded of what Paul said in 1 Timothy chapter 4 and about verse 1, how the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith. I'm so glad he didn't say all, but he said some shall depart from the faith, giving heed, watch this, to seducing spirits and doctrines or teachings of demons. The Bible points out that in the latter times, there's going to be a pervasive and continuous falling away from the church. And now we got brothers who used to be strong preachers in the body of Christ teaching doctrine that cannot be substantiated by the word of God. And I'm telling you, we need to be careful. Paul said in Acts chapter 20 and about verse 28, he told the elders, take heed therefore unto yourselves and the flock over which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers to feed the church of God which he has purchased with his own blood. He said, for I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. And from your own selves, he said, they're going to draw away disciples after themselves. We're living in a time now where it's an inside-out job. We got brothers who used to be strong in the faith who are pulling members away from the truth and they're turning them over to error. Amen. And we need to stand on the word of God. We need to quit incentivizing and reinforcing these brothers that we know are not preaching the truth. We need to quit going to their websites. We need to quit following them on Facebook. YouTube, we need to quit following them on Twitter, on Instagram. We need to quit supporting this foolishness. And it has become pervasive. And I'm concerned about it. And all of us should be concerned about it. When God brings about change, it does not contradict Scripture. Men bring perversion, and perversion contradicts Scripture. There's a difference between God bringing change and men bringing perversions. Just because they can preach good 
just because they can make you want to shout, just because they can quote a bunch of scripture, just because they got a whole lot of theatrics going on in the church that entertain us and make us excited about what they're doing does not mean they are preaching the truth. And so we need to stand on the word of God. We need to stay in the will of God and we need to walk in the way of God. And so the Bible says in verse 13 of the text, let me get back to my text. Didn't certain of the vagabond Jews, these are nomadic Jews. These are gypsy Jews. These are strollers. These are wanderers. They are hustlers. They're con artists. Bible tells us in Romans chapter 16 and about verse 17, y'all know we got con artists in the religious world today. We got gypsy preachers in the church today. We got nomadic preachers in the church today doing their own thing. And many of them just use the pandemic and online expressions as a way to hide what they were doing, but now they're not even hiding it anymore. Paul said, now I beseech you in Romans 16 and verse 17, now I beseech you, brethren, watch this, mark them which cause division and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned. And then he said, avoid them. He said, mark them and avoid them. For they that are such, watch this, serve not our Lord Jesus, but their own bellies. They don't care nothing about church. They're concerned about padding their pockets. They're concerned about uh, getting more followers online. They go around bragging about how many followers they got online. I don't care how many folk follow me online. I'm more concerned about following Jesus in heaven. Put their own bellies. And watch this. And by good words and fair speeches, deceive the heart of the simple. That's why you got to stay in the word. So these vagabond Jews... The Bible calls them exorcists. They're spellbinders. That is, expellers of demons, supposedly. Those who claim to employ a formula of conjuring to cast out demons. And the Bible says that they took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits the name of the Lord Jesus, saying, We adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preached. I mean, who are they? They are the seven sons of Siva. Siva was a Jew, and he was a chief of the priest. In other words, we're talking about preacher kids. And the reason the preacher kids are so bad is because they be hanging out with the elders and the deacons' kids. <laughs> Siva's son. One tri translation says, itinerant Jewish exorcists. And they endeavored to cast out evil spirits. They were trying to imitate what they saw Paul do. And they said, we adjure you by the Jesus whom Paul preaches. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. But who are ye? And the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them and overcame them and prevailed against them so that they fled out of the house naked and wounded. But those demons sure enough whooped him up, them up. And when you think about that, the devil knows who we are. I mean, the story is told about the devil came to the world one day. He started looking for believers. He went to the club. Couldn't find too many believers there. He found a few. Say amen when you can. Amen. Went to the corner with the drug dealers and the addicts. Couldn't find anybody there. He got tired of wandering around, so he decided, 
I'm going to go to church. And he sat on the front row. <laughs> Had on a red suit. And when it was asked, why did he leave the club? Why did he leave the corners? He said, I got all of them. But he said, I decided to go to church because I got a few here I need to get. And he's here right now. And he's trying to influence you. He's trying to influence me. First Peter 5, 8, he's a roaring lion. You need to know who he is before you can know if he knows you. You need to know who he is. He's a roaring lion. Uh, Isaiah 14 and 12, he's the son of the morning star. He was so beautiful of all the seraphims. Now, you do know you've got basically two categories of angels. you got the seraphims. They are more of the fighting and warring kind of angels. Then you got the seraphims. They are more of the worshiping and praise kind of angels. Well, Lucifer was a praise angel, and I told you before, he was the leader of praise in glory. And then he got so full of himself, he tried to exalt himself above God. And consequently, he caused a rebellion in heaven. And God sent Michael and the angels to fight against him. And ultimately, he was kicked out of heaven. Amen. Not only is he Lucifer, he's the tempter. Matthew chapter 4, he tempted Jesus 40 days and 40 nights. He's the accuser and the serpent. Revelation 12 and verse 10, he's the father of lies. Every lie has a parent, and the parent of every lie is the devil. He's a murderer, John 8, 44. He's the prince of the power of air, Ephesians 2, verses 1 through 3. In other words, this is his realm. This is where he operates. Why do you think? We've got so much confusion in the world today, so much division in the world today, so much hatred in the world today, so much racism in the world today. It's because the enemy is the prince of the power of the air. He's Beelzebub, Mark 3, 22. He's Beliah, 2 Corinthians 6 and verse 15. But the question ought not be, does he know who you are? The question ought to be, do you know who you are? And Satan ought to know who you are because you and I, we have been justified. We have been sanctified. We are blood-bought. We are spirit-taught. We are Bible-toting, scripture-quoting, Satan-bashing, sin-trashing, Christ-following, pride-swallowing, hard-praying, truth-conveying, Faith walking, gospel talking. We've been baptized, bona fide. We are believers in Jesus Christ and we are favored by God. That's who we are. So the sons of Siva, very quickly, first of all, the sons of Siva, they did not understand that it's not just about what you do. But why you do what you do? That's ritualism. The Bible says they took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits in the name of the Lord Jesus. You got to make sure you have the right motives when it comes to worshiping God. You should make sure that when you come to worship, your heart is right with God. Now the sons of Siva, they did the right thing, but they did not have the right motives. They did the right thing, but they did not have the truth in their heart. They did the right thing, but they did not have the spirit of God dwelling in them. They did the right thing, but they were lost. They did the right thing, but they were not saved. They did the right thing, but they had not obeyed the gospel. They did the right thing, but they were not baptized into Christ. They did the right thing, but they were not in the church of Christ. The only church you can read about 
on the pages of inspiration. They did the right thing, but they needed to have God's spirit in them because the Bible says the spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. God knows who you are, not by your physical features. God knows who you are by your spiritual feature. Because when you have the spirit of God in you, then God from heaven can identify you as being his child because he sees a part of himself in you. Debbie and I, we cannot deny Amber in Janae because they have physical features that indicate that they are our children. And some of you all right now, look at your children. I mean, they look like you. They talk like you. They even act like you. They have characteristics about them that indicate that they belong to you and you belong to them. Acts chapter 5 and verse 32, the Bible says, and we are his witnesses of these things. And so also is what? The Holy Ghost, whom God has given to all that obey him. Now, you got to have the Spirit of God in you. And the sons of Siva, they performed the ritual, but they did not have relationship. They performed the right ritual, but they did not have the Spirit of God dwelling in them. They performed the right ritual, but they did not know Jesus. They performed the right ritual, but they did not know the Father. Second John 9, the Bible says, Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ hath not God, and he that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, watch this, hath both the Father and the Son. So when I follow the teachings of Christ, not only do I have Jesus in me, when I follow the teachings of Christ, not only do I have the Holy Ghost in me, but I have the Father in me as well. So they were religious, but they were lost because they did not have the Father. They did not have the Son. They did not have the Holy Spirit. They did not know that ritual without relationship does not equal righteousness. And so you've got to make sure that you have a relationship with the Son. Because if I'm in the Son, then I got the Father. If I'm in the Son, not only do I have the Father, but I've got the Spirit of God in me. Then secondly, the sons of Siva, they did not understand that it's not just what you say, but why you say what you say. It's about righteousness. They said the right things, but they were not convicted by what they said. They said the right things, but they were not converted by what they heard. They said the right things, but they were not willing to be covered by the blood of Jesus. And the only way you can come in contact with the blood, you got to go down in the water right. If you're not taught right, I don't care who baptized you. If you're not taught right, you cannot be saved right because you're not baptized right. They said the right thing, but they did not believe what they were saying. They said the right things, but they were not pricked in their hearts by what they were saying. They said the right things, but they had not repented of their sins. They had not confessed Christ to be the Son of God. They had not been baptized in water for the remission of their sins. And they did not realize that form without faith is foolishness. Bible says in Psalms chapter 14 and verse number 1, the Bible says the fool has said in his heart there is no God. You know the definition of a real fool? A real fool 
is somebody who does not believe in God. That's a fool. You out there living your life without believing in the one who created life. He says they are corrupt. They have done abominable works. There is none that doeth good. That is the definition of a fool. And then 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 5 says, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. We can go through the formality of looking religious. We can go through the formality of being religious. We can go through the formality of ceremony. But if I don't believe that he died for me, if I don't believe that he got up early Sunday morning with all power in the palm of his hand, then all that the communion is to me is juice and dry crackers. But if I believe he died on that cross, if I believe he got up early Sunday morning with all power in the palm of his hand, when I take that communion, I believe that I am in communion with Christ himself as I partake of the bread and drink of the fruit of the vine because I know he's alive in where? Well. Then Mark 7 and verse 6, Jesus said unto them, Well, has Isaiah prophesied of you hypocrites, the sons of Siva were hypocrites. For the Bible says, this people honoreth me with their lips. I mean, they said the right thing, but their heart is far from me. And brothers and sisters, you need to ask yourself, Am I in the camp of the sons of Siva? Do I really believe what the Bible says? Do I really believe? Am I really convicted? I'm finally, I'm, I'm done. Finally. Done don't mean I'm sitting down, but I'm done. I, I, I see the street lights. We've had a long week. And so I don't need to hold you too much along, but I'll let you know when I'm done. Finally, the sons of Siva did not understand. Watch this. It's not just about what you know. But more importantly, it's about who you know. That's relationship. Verse 15, the Bible says, And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus, I know. And Paul, I know. But who are you, which means even the evil spirits know when you belong to God. So the sons of Siva, they knew the words, but they did not know the one the words were being spoken about. They knew what to say, but they didn't know the one they were saying the words about. They said the right words. But they did not have a relationship with the one they were speaking about. They did not know that he was the Lord of Lords. They did not know he was a king of kings. They did not know he was a rose of Sharon, the Alpha and the Omega, the lily of the valley, the fairest of ten thousands, the bright in the morning star. They said the right things. They did the right things. They knew the right things, but they did not know Jesus. And listen, it's all right to know you in the church of Christ, but do you know the Christ of the church? Amen. Just because you in the church of Christ is one thing. You can be in the visible church but do you know the invisible Christ do you have a relationship with Jesus they had a form of godliness but they denied the power thereof Romans 10 verse 1 Paul said in reference to the Jews for I bear the record that they have a zeal of God 
but not according to knowledge. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness, watch this, and going about to establish their own righteousness, they have not submitted unto the righteousness of God. You know, that's what's happening in the world today. Everybody think they can invent their own thing. And we see it happening in the church of Christ. I mean, we see it. And some of us think, oh, that, that's good change. That's perversion. And you got to learn to differentiate between providential change and demonic perversion. God brings change progressively, but it does not con contradict his word. The enemy brings perversion and it contradicts the word. And what the enemy does, he will confuse us and we will believe our perversion is the truth. And just because the preacher is popular, just because everybody's flocking to him. Just because he can quote a ton of scriptures and break them down and make your toes curl. We think he got to be right. We better be careful. Jesus said, if the blind follow the blind, you're going to both end up in a pit. So it's about knowing because zeal without knowledge is ignorance. Job knew who he was talking about. He died and never met the Redeemer, but he said in Job 19, 25, I know my Redeemer lives and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. Question, what do you know? Do you know you are saved? Do you know you have a relationship with the Father through the Son? Do you know you're in a church that you can read about in the Bible? Do you know that when you die, you are going to go to heaven? Do you know? What do you know? Paul said over there in 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 12, For I know whom I have believed. And I am persuaded that he's able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. What do you know? Do you know that it doesn't matter what church you go to as long as your heart is right? Do you know that to be a biblical fact? And then Paul continued over there in Philippians 3 and verse 10. He said that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being made conformable unto his death. What do you know? Paul said, prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. Peter said, be ready to give an answer to every man that asks you of the reason of the hope that is within you. What do you know? You need to know that you say, can you show what you did to be saved? Over there in John 17 and verse number 3, John said, and this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom ye have sent. That word know is the word gnosko. In the Greek, we transliterate it in English, and we get Gnostic. Gnostic. You know, the Gnostics were the ones who claimed, like these Masons, that they had a secret knowledge of God. Secret. The devil is a liar. Everything God wanted you to know, he put it in the book. And he did not hide anything from you that was expressly related to your salvation. The Bible says the secret things, Deuteronomy 29, 29, belong unto God. But those things he's revealed unto us are for us and our children's children. 
All right, I'm done. 1 John 2 and verse 13. 1 John 2 and verse 13. Come on up. Come on up, Johnny Mathis. Get ready to sing, boys. <laughs> Come on up. That, that boy, that's a singing man right there. That boy, boy, if I could sing it like him, I would never get to my lesson. <laughs> and the word, the word no in the book of 1 John, the word no appears about 40 times. John is constantly trying to impress upon the minds of believers. God didn't hide anything from you. Don't listen to these Gnostics. Don't listen to these folk claiming that they got some kind of secret knowledge. I've seen this book called The Secret. Somebody got rich off that book. I guess The Secret was out when you bought the book. <laughs> I mean, we, we, The Secret. God didn't hide anything from you. 1 John 2.13, he said, I write unto you fathers because ye have known what do you know. And then he says, I write unto, uh, write unto young men because you have overcome the wicked one. I write unto you little children because ye have known. What do you know? What do you know? It ain't about, it ain't about your charisma. It's not so much about your ability. It's about having a relationship with Jesus. When it's all said and done, do you know you have a relationship with Jesus? Amen. Do you know when you leave this world, heaven will be your home? You know, one day I'm going to die. One day I'm going to die. But I'm going to be just as alive then as I am now. Because the only thing that dies about you is your body. Your spirit goes back to God and your soul has to go to the Hadean world where you wait until Jesus comes and your soul has to give an account for all the things you've done in your body, whether it be good or bad. But if you're in paradise, you're in paradise because you were covered by the blood. Amen. Story is told about this fox and this fox was malnourished. This fox was about to die. And somehow this fox wandered onto this woman's back porch. And this woman threw some food out to the fox. And the fox ate it. And she fed that fox every day. She groomed that fox until that fox trusted her, began to connect with her. And that fox would come back to her porch every day. And she would feed that fox. Sometimes that fox would just go to sleep on her back porch. And every morning she would get out there and look and throw that fox something to eat. And that fox just got stronger. Then one morning she went looking for that fox. And that fox wasn't there. She was sort of sad. Because she really got close to that fox. And she really liked that fox. And then one day she went looking. And the fox was back. And she said, hey, fox, where you been? And she threw some meat out there for the fox, and the fox ate it. Then the fox ran out behind the bushes. She said, fox, where you going? And before she knew it, the fox came back and had a whole bunch of other foxes with it. And fox was saying to the other foxes, I just want y'all to know that I'm just a nobody, but I met somebody who can save anybody because it wasn't about how cute the fox was it was about the fact that the fox knew her and she knew the fox and the fox shared the news with all the other foxes so what about you what are you waiting on God loves you so much and he wants to know you. He wants to know you intimately. He wants to know you spiritually. He knows you by creation, but he wants to know you by regeneration. And that means you've got to believe that Jesus died for you. He didn't just die for me. 
He died for the whole world. But his death doesn't mean anything to you if you don't believe it. And then you need to be willing to make a change in your life. The Bible calls it repentance. It's a change of mind that results in a change of your status. So you need to make up, you can sit right there and repent. You can sit right there and hear. You can sit right there and believe. But if you believe what you've heard, and if a change is taking place in your heart, in your mind, then you need to stand up. You need to come down this aisle, and you need to open your mouth and make the greatest confession that you can ever make. And that confession is, I believe that he is the Christ, the Son of God. Amen. Will you be willing to do that today? I can't save you. The elders can't save you. The deacons can't save you. The church members can't save you. You've got to save yourself. And that starts with you coming down and making that grand confession. And then we got the water ready. The clothes are ready. We'll baptize you R-A-T right now. Right now. Because baptism is the point where God washes away all your sins. Because the Bible says it's for the remission or forgiveness of your sin. So when do you want to be forgiven? And if you will come down the aisles right now, we'll take your confession and we will baptize you into Christ. If you need to know more about Jesus, we'll sit down and talk with you. We'll study with you. And if you're a child of God, and maybe you're going through a difficult moment in your life, and you just need prayer. I know you stood at the beginning of service, and you confess your sins, but sometimes we need a little bit more help. And so if you need a little bit more help, we're going to be led in a song by Brother Gibbs. And if you feel subject to heaven's invitation, we encourage you to come right now as together we stand and as we sing. Come on, y'all. Somebody. I give myself away. Away. I give myself away so you, you can use me. I give myself away. Will you come? Will you come? Away. Will you come? Will you come? Lord, I give myself away. So, so you, so you can use. I give myself, I give myself away. Will you come? Away. Will you come? Will you come? Will you come? I give myself away so so you so you can use I give myself I give myself away we'll wait for you we'll wait for you we'll wait for you Lord away and I give myself away so you so you you can use me here I am and here I am. Will you come? Will you come? Here I stand. Will you come? Lord, my life, my life is in, in your hands. Sing it, bro. Go on, sing. And Lord, sing your song, man. Long, Somebody. Long Somebody want to give themselves away to the Lord see. right now. See your desires revealed in love. Will you come? Will you come? I give myself away. Will you come? Will you come? Away. I give myself away. So you, so you can use. I give myself, I give myself away. We'll wait for you, we'll wait for you. Lord, away. We'll wait for you. I give myself away. So you, so you can use me. Y'all hear that song? You got to give yourself away. 
Can't no one do it for you? Heaven is too wonderful. Hell is too hot. Life is too short. You can be here today. And you can be gone today. And you can be young and die. But if you're past the age of accountability and you know right from wrong, it is time to get right with God. And I need to tell y'all, the black churches of Christ, we are under attack. And the enemy is trying to put us out of business. And we better wake up and recognize what's going on. Because we have held on to the truth. And we've stood on the principles. And now we are under attack. And the enemy wants your soul. And he wants to tear down the church of Christ. He's attacking our national lectureship. He's attacking our local congregations. We need to be strong. We need to fortify ourselves. Because we are under attack. And so right now, we're going to sing. A, what you got? You got, you got something else? Come on, you got to have something else, boy. Looking like you just left the Oscars. Come on. <laughs> Give me something. Give me something. We're going to get another verse. I got to make him work because he can't get up here and sing one song. Come on, boy. Take my heart. Yeah. Take my life. Take my life as a living, as a li- living sad. All of my dreams and all my dreams, yeah. all my plans, my plans, it, Lord, I place them in your hands, and Lord, I give myself away. myself away so you so that you can use me I give myself away away and I give myself away so you so you so you can one more time I give myself away I give it all away, Lord, I give myself so that you, so you, you can use me. Just very quick, uh, our evangelist, over evangelism, Brother Ronnie Lofton. If you have any questions, you want to know more about the church, more about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that's my man right there. Amen. Amen. He, amen. That, that brother can convert the devil if you come steady with him. <laughs> amen. Good afternoon. I'm before you with our response cards. Quite a few here. Benny Guajardo, I want to thank everyone who prayed for me. I got the job. Sister Crute, please pray that Dominique secure a job in Boston for his co-op program. Sister Corella Sparks, prayer requests, asking prayers for my son Roderick, grandmother Audrey, the decisions that they have made have caused some serious changes in their lives. Please keep our family in your prayers, also traveling grace as we travel to East Texas on Thursday we will return back on Monday the 17th. Sister Regina Washington, prayer requests. Please keep Art's father, Art Washington, in your prayers. On Wednesday, he went into cardiac arrest. Since Wednesday, he has progressed so much. He is off the ventilator and talking. Keep Art in prayers as well as he returns home on Wednesday. Amen. Sister Bobby Gates, prayer requests. Request traveling grace for me, Rita, Chantel, and Sean. We'll be attending a funeral in Colleen, Texas this Thursday. 
Brother Paulus Clack, prayer requests. Pray for my friends. My friend Mike Mundy died from a heart attack. Sister Dana Wallace, prayer requests. I'm requesting prayers for my family. My cousin Donna Brown passed away this morning in Detroit. Her mother found her on the floor. My cousin had surgery a few months ago and never fully recovered. This is the third child my aunt uncle has lost. Please keep my cousin, son, Christopher, my aunt, uncle, and the rest of my family in your thoughts and prayers. Amen. Prayer request from Sister Patricia Clack. Three, please pray for Sister Leola Dennis, Sister Virginia Smothers, Sister Nancy Green, Sister Doris, Dorothy Jones, and for my sister-in-law, Lillian Mitchell, that lost her oldest son. Amen. Brother Mark Miles, prayer request. He's having surgery on Friday for his veins and arm. I'll ask Brother Nate Pierce heart and mind for prayer. My last car here, Brother Hoyt Andrews, asked for prayers, having an outpatient procedure on Monday. Prayers for a successful surgery and speedy recovery. If you'd like to reach out, please speak with Hoyt, Victoria, or Alex. That's all of my cards. So uh, we'll go to God in prayer at this time for those who have asked. Nathan asked me if I could pray this morning. He didn't feel good. So we'll go to God in prayer for all of our requests. Father, we come this morning and we just so humbly thank you for the opportunity to stand here this morning, for the opportunity, Father, to approach your throne of grace, for the opportunity, Father, to ask you to be with us as we strive to live lives that is pleasing and acceptable in your sight. Father, we've heard many, many requests made from your brother, from our brothers and sisters. We ask you to be with us and be with them uh, as they uh, go through the changes that may be going on in their individual lives. We ask you, Father, to be with their brothers and sisters, us, as we find time and find ways, Father, to assist in whatever areas we can assist in. Father, help us encourage them to be the children you've asked them to be as long as they live. Father, bless us as we uh, talk to them, as we uh, reach out to them, uh, that they may find opportunity to serve you more and to serve you better and to do your will as they continue to live. Bless this congregation, Father, as we strive to do the things you've asked, all of the efforts that go forth to reach this community. Bless each and every member of this congregation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. As we prepare for the Lord's Supper and Communion this morning, if you would, turn in your songbooks to page 574. Oh, how I love Jesus, page 574. As we take our minds back to the cross, page 574. We'll sing the first and the third verse. All found? Let us sing. There is a name I love to hear, I love to sing. It's worth, it sounds like music in my ear. The sweetest name of oh, Because he first loved me, it tells, it tells of one whose loving heart can feel my deepest woe. In each sorrow bears a part that none can bear below. How I love Jesus, oh, how I love Jesus, and oh, 
how I love Jesus because he first and oh, how I love, yes, he's wonderful, how I love Jesus, oh, how I love Jesus, because he first loved me. Church, say amen. amen. It is now time for communion. This is a time when we flake back on the cross where Jesus died for your sins and mine, and we mo- might have life more abundant. I'll be taking my example from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, beginning at verse 23, and it reads, For I received of the Lord, in which also I delivered it to you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. You do this in remembrance of me. After the same manner, he also took the cup. When he had supper, saying, this cup is a new testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, you do so the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty in body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself. And so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthy, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not the Son of the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. Let us pray for the bread. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this bread. It represents your broken body on the cross, that we may take this with clean hands and pure hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. pray for the cup. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this cup, which represents your son's shedded blood on the cross, that we may take this with clean hands and pure hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. It is now time for giving. I'll be taking my example from 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 and 7. But this I say, he would Sowing sparingly shall reap also sparingly. He which sowing bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according to his purpose in his heart. So let him give, not grudging of necessity, for God love a chipper giver. Let us give at this time. I like to stay here longer than man's a lot of days and watch the fleeing changes of life even way. But if my Savior calls me to that sweet home on high, I live with him forever in glory. By and by, oh, yes, I live in glory, glory, by and by. I tell and sing love story, you know, there on high and there with my dear Redeemer. There's no more to die, oh, yes, I live in glory, glory, by. And by I want to be a service along this pilgrim way and lead the lost to Jesus as fervently I pray as day by day I travel I keep him ever nigh and live with him forever in glory by and by, oh, yes, I live in glory, glory, by and by, yes, I tell and sing the story, you know, there, on high and there, with my dear Redeemer, there's no more to die, oh, yes, I live in glory, glory by and by, oh, yes.
Yes, I live in glory, glory by and by. I tell and sing the story, you know, there on high and there with my dear Redeemer. There's no more to die. Oh, yes, I live in glory, glory by and by. Let's pray for the offering. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this offering. We thank those who gave and we thank those who wanted to give who could not. May this offering be for the building of his kingdom and the spread of his word. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. As we prepare to uh, greet our visitors formally here again, I want to make a quick announcement before we do so. Uh, just a reminder to everyone that every other Sunday, immediately after following our morning worship service, we're going to, some of us are going to meet down front to begin learning some new congregational hymns, songs and hymns that we will e eventually introduce uh, to the larger body of the congregation and then integrate into our worship service. So it's going to be every other Sunday starting today. Uh, so for those who are able and willing to stay with us, we're going to meet right here in the first three rows immediately after service. I promise we won't stay long, but we've got the songs. They'll be up on the screen. We'll learn some new praise and worship songs. Some you may know, some you may not, but we're going to learn them all together. Uh, so I just wanted to make a reference and reminder of everyone of that, that we are starting that uh, today. And that's open to any member of the congregation who is interested um, and willing to sing with us and help us learn these new songs. Thank you. So in recognition of our visitors this morning, um, and Sonny's going to lead us in our closing prayer, but we have one visitor card that I have, uh, Roland Martin, the guest of Hoyt. Glad to have you with us. Glad to have Roland in our attendance this morning. Do we have any other visitors that I do not have a card for? If you would just stand there, there's one. We're in the back, that's two. So we appreciate all of you all for being in our attendance this morning. And so this time we're going to ask Sonny, uh, and we have a closing visitor song, and then we have a closing prayer by Sonny. Let us all be standing. Oh, oh, oh welcome to Del Crest. We're so glad you came. We want to get to know you. What's your name? We're spreading God's love and we're not ashamed. Oh, welcome to Del Crest. We're so glad you came. Oh, welcome to Del Crest. We're so glad you came. Oh, welcome to Del Crest. We're so glad you came. Is there any more announcements? Uh, I just want to... Uh, say don't forget the ones who, who can uh, stay and help uh, clean the building, take all the decorations down for BBS. And uh, one announcement I don't think was made. Uh, let's keep Josh in our prayers. Uh, Josh uh, lost his aunt this week, and he will be going to Indiana for the funeral. Uh, let us bow. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for uh, allowing us to come and worship thee in spirit and in truth. Heavenly Father, we hope that something that has been said that would prick our hearts to make us think on our lives and our lives with you, that we may be better Christians in the future than we've been in the past. Father, as we're in the act of leaving this place, we ask you to go with us, keep us, and bring us back at the appointed time. These and other blessings we ask in Jesus' name. Amen.